Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is the first segment of our Week 2 content, where we will be covering most things file I.O. and file sharing. The material for this week is split into several video segments to hopefully make it easier for you to consume the content and work alongside it. In this segment, we'll actually run through a quick code example illustrating the resource limitations around the file descriptors. The second segment will cover the open and close source calls, then we'll go on to read, write, and lseek, and move on from there. Sound good? Let's get started. In our segment on Unix basics, we already briefly summarized the concept of file descriptors. We saw the use of the standard file descriptors in a few code examples, such as when we implemented the cat command. To summarize, in Unix, almost all I.O. is done on file descriptors, also known as file handles. These file descriptors are implemented as small, non-negative integers, which is the reason why almost all syscalls having to do with I.O. take an int as an argument. This approach allows for a neat abstraction. By using a file descriptor, the syscall in question does not need to know whether it actually represents an actual file, a pipe, or a socket, for example. Once you have a file descriptor, you can operate on it, pass it into functions, and even onto your children for inter-process communication. You can implement an API that works for file I.O., just as it works for network I.O. by operating on file descriptors. As we discussed, we know that standard in, standard out, and standard er are nearly universally declared as 0, 1, and 2 respectively, but as we also discussed already, we do not use magic numbers in our code, and instead use our symbolic definitions for them. Our terminal is set up such that our shell has these three file descriptors already open and connected as illustrated here. Standard in and standard er both connected to the terminal by default, so there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the two, but the elegance of this simple setup becomes apparent when we consider the common use case of piping output from one command into the other. In that case, each program has its standard er connected to the terminal, but standard out and standard in are connected via the pipe, allowing the flow of bytes from one to the other while each program retains the capability of generating error messages to the terminal. Okay, so file descriptors are awesome, but they are necessarily a finite resource. If the kernel has to keep track of which integer represents which file, then it cannot allow a program to open an infinite number of files. Unix systems generally have to be careful about what resources they allow to be used. As a multi-processing, multi-user system, there always exists the threat of resource starvation of one process or the entire system by another. So what is the maximum number of file descriptors a process is allowed to handle? Or, asked another way, how many files is a process allowed to open? To find out, we do what we will do a whole lot in this class. We write a program. Whenever we want to find out how something works, when we want to verify that our understanding of a concept is correct, we try to put it in code and see what happens. For this question, how many files can a process have, we will use the program openmax.c. The program attempts to identify the maximum number of file descriptors per process in a number of ways. Let's look at main. First, we are checking whether the openmax constant has been conveniently defined for us. This happens via a preprocessor definition in a system header, and we can include code in our program conditional on the presence of this constant. Next, we are looking at the getconf invocation. Looking at the manual page using an nifty trick from our tooltip, we note that getconf references sysconf, which we'll see in a second. As we continue in our program, we ask sysconf ourselves for the value of the underscore sc openmax variable. Per the manual page, sysconf gets us a configurable system variable. sc openmax sounds just like what we need. Now, like all good Unix functions, the return value is meaningful. We get back negative 1 on error, with Erno set appropriately. But we also need a way to identify when we can't find the variable we were asked to look up. But we can't return 0, since that might be a valid value. 
So we return negative 1 again, but leave Erno unmodified. This is why we explicitly need to set Erno to 0 here. Otherwise, it's possible that a function called prior to us calling sysconf sets Erno to a non-zero value, and we wouldn't be able to tell the value was not found. Note also the comment up here about the function call getDetailSize, which provides the value we are looking for. But as the manual page notes, it's functionally equivalent with a call to sysconf we made ourselves, and which, which we wanted to illustrate here. We can verify that this is actually not only functionally equivalent, but the exact same thing as calling sysconf by looking at the implementation in the source file. After having retrieved the value for scopenmaxed, we are next looking at get rlimit for the rlimit nofile resource, which, not surprisingly again, gets a value representing the max number of open files. The resource limitations inspected by getter limit are per process, meaning any attempt to change them can only be done within the same process. We'll get back to this idea and the concept of shell built ins in a future lecture. Okay, so by this point we have a few numbers, but which number applies? For that, we wrote a function called openfiles. Openfiles first attempts to identify which file descriptors are currently open. Unfortunately, there is no convenient call to get that set, and since a closed file descriptor does not lead to a renumbering of the other open file descriptors, there'd be quite some chaos if it did, we need to actually iterate over the full set and test each one. We're assuming we don't have more than num file descriptors, so we check all of them via the fstat system call, print which one is open, and count those that are. Next, we are starting opening files in a loop, only exiting the loop if we are running into the limit, which is relayed to us by open setting erno to em file. After all that, we are done with our OpenMax program. And return. Let's compile and run this program. Okay, let's see what it says. First, we find that OpenMax is defined to be 128. But then getconf openmax claims that it's 1024. That seems odd, since one would expect those two to be the same number. Let's check manually. Okay, 128 is what the header says. 1024 is what getconf says. Let's look at getconf. Here, in user source, user bin, getconf, getconf.c, we see that the value for openmax shall use sysconf with a value of scopenmax. In main, we'll follow the call to print var, where we see that for variables of type sysconf, it will make the sysconf library function call. So getconf openmax is indeed the exact same as sysconf scopenmax again, which we know to be 1024, just like what get our limit says. But all right, let's see which number is right. We find that fd0, 1 and 2, that is standard in, standard out, and standard er, are open as we would expect. They are connected to our terminal as usual. 
We were then able to open an additional 1021 files, meaning it looks like the 1024 number was accurate. Let's inspect what the current limit in our shell is via the U limit built in. 1024, again, no surprise. What happens when we change this number by lowering the limit to, say, 64? Our program continues to, exi to ex insist that openmax is 128. But all the other methods, getconf, sysconf, getterlimit, appear to agree that it's 64, which we experimentally can confirm. This illustrates that the maximum number of open files per process is configurable at runtime, meaning it can change from one moment to the next, which is why the sysconf function allows you to retrieve it equally at runtime, instead of looking up a fixed constant from the header file. Now let's see what this number is whether or not this number is the same across different versions of Unix. First, we can try to run this command on macOS, which we recall from our earlier lecture is derived from Darwin, which itself is BSD-derived system. Now, when we run our program, OpenMax program over here, let's compile it. Whoops. Wrong directory. Okay, compile it and run it. So now when we run our OpenMax program here, we find that OpenMax is defined to be 10.24.0, 10 times the number sysconf returned on NetBSD. But getconf and friends all agree in 25.60. This illustrates the different operating systems may use different fixed constants. Let's compare to a Linux system. Here we access an Ubuntu 16.04 system. The output from our OpenMax program here shows us that on some platforms, OpenMax may not be defined at all. But the runtime configuration value here is again defined to be 1024, just like on our NetBSD system. OK, so let's go back to our reference VM one more time. And let's look at the Get Detable Size manual page. The history section of the manual page includes this information. Historically, each process had a fixed size descriptor table, and get the table size would return that fixed value. But since the table is dynamic nowadays, this doesn't make much sense. All right. After having spent a perhaps surprising amount of time on the simple question, how many file descriptors can a process have open? We finally know that the answer is... It depends. Specifically, we found out that OpenMax may not be defined on the platform you're on. OpenMax may be defined, but may not reflect reality. In fact, OpenMax may not be useful at all to answer these questions, even though it really sounded like it would be. We also noticed that sysconf and getterlimit may return different values in subsequent invocations, even within the same process. Most importantly, though, I hope that we showed that writing and reading some code to figure out what's going on is a useful way to get a better understanding of a topic. So whenever you wonder, wait, what would happen if, whip out your editor and write some code. Testing your code on multiple platforms is then a great way to confirm that your understanding is correct. Ah, you thought you were done with this question now, didn't you? Think again. There's always more to research, another layer to investigate. Here are some questions for you to research after you've completed this example on your own. If, as root, you set the limit to unlimited, what number will that be? We know it can't be infinite, or can it? There is a value called underscore POSIX open max. What does that have to do with anything? And we have another exercise for you to prep before the next video segment. In that segment, we move on to take a closer look at open and close. 
Thanks for watching. Cheers.